Hi, I'm Dan. Thanks for tuning in to Dim Garden. Uh, special thanks to the patrons on Patreon and the backers on Kickstarter. I'm going to give another little shout out here to another group of people who um, who really do help the campaign, even even if it's not in a financial way. And um, that is a big part of getting a campaign out there is you need to hit those channels in social media. And there are people who, even though they aren't, you know, consistently backing the Kickstarter or the Patreon, um, we'll jump in there and we'll like or upvote um, the things that we post. Um, and we appreciate that and it doesn't go unnoticed. And that brings me to today's question. I'm going to do another quick Q&A. Oh, kill it quick. Uh, this one comes from David. It comes to me on through Reddit. And the reason that I noticed David is he's one of those people. I, he, I don't know that he is or is not a backer in any way. Um, but he, he definitely, uh, when we have uh, activity there in Reddit, uh, maybe on Facebook too, he may, I don't, I don't know what his Facebook is, but he, he comments and jumps in in a positive way, and we appreciate that. All right, so here's David's question. It says, don't you agree that Dim Guard's traps are exceptionally deadly, especially for low-level PCs? So the, the short answer is yes, um, but that doesn't tell the whole story. I think we're talking about first level characters, right? And the truth is that first level is just extremely fragile. Falling off of a two story building can can kill a a a PC who's already wounded, right? If you if you if you've taken uh, you know if you have ten hit points and you've taken um if you've taken nine points of damage and you haven't gotten healed. Um, and the DM rolls high, and on falling damage, you don't have average damage. You always roll, as far as I, I believe that's right. I'll have to check that, but um, 2d6 is kills you, right? So first level is just exceptionally um, fragile. The most common way I have seen for PCs to die at first level is you're dinked a little bit. Um, you may have you know 10 hit points to start with. You've taken six hit points of damage already, and you get hit by a crit. Right. So now then you're facing, you know, uh, a, a long swords uh, use two hand. It's 2d10 um, plus strength modifier and, and poof. There you go. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so our traps and hazards are <coughs> like everything in the game rough on first level PCs. So where does that damage come from, though? <coughs> that, that, that seems to be the implied question to me. And what we do is we take the um, the trap damage from the DMG 120, and we take dangerous, the dangerous damage, um, and uh, that's the damage we're going to use for our hazards. So that's the kernel. <coughs> now, if you if you look at the hazards, um, there's some scaling involved because they're, the the traps don't really they're, they're like well it's either a setback a day, and they don't really care if it's for a fifth level. PC or a 10th level PC, but we do, right? We, we want, we understand that there is a significant difference between the, the resources of a 5th level party and the resources of a 10th level party, and we want our hazards to take that into account, because remember our goal is that climactic event at the end of the adventuring day, and the purpose of the hazards is to whittle down those resources along the way. So then, like I say, we use that dangerous damage. Almost always we use dangerous damage um, for our traps and hazards. Um, we usually use setback for the skills challenges because those are those can be imposed multiple times over the course of the event. But for just a straight up hazard or, or trap, um, we use the, uh, the dangerous damage. And then the scaling comes in around that damage, right? So the typical structure of a dim guard hazard is you have an event is going to deal some damage, have a saving throw for half, fail that saving throw by badly, usually five plus, uh, and there's going to be a lingering effect, right? And there are going to be um, elements of the party that could um, ameliorate that either for the individual or for the party as a whole. So, for example, um, in the case of a, of, a, of a collapsing rock formation, PCs who have uh, 
passive perception of a certain threshold, have advantage on the saving throw to avoid it. Um, or in the case of a disease, if anybody in the party has proficiency in medicine, then everybody in the party has advantage because that one doctor's uh, that one doctor's skill um, helps everybody. All right, so um, so then that that brings up so then we use the same core damage. So fifth level party, tenth level party, first level party, fourth level party. We're using that same core damage. And that those elements around that are what allow us to scale that encounter, right? So if the if the adventure is targeted for um, third level PCs, it'll have a different um, save DC, um, a different levels of uh, of ameliorating effects. You know, the, the passive perception will be different than it will be for first level PC. Same thing, fifth level versus 10th level. The lingering effects may not be as harsh, right? Um, so those, that's how we um, that's how we, we arrive at that end point. Um, we think that this is very consistent with the rules as written in fifth edition, which we like to remain close to the rules as written um, as possible, because um, that allows the DM to have confidence uh, when they're preparing the models, they don't have to, you know, go through the module with a fine tooth comb, finding the, the deviants, the deviancies from the rules. They they can pick it up and be confident that if they know the rules, they're going to be able to present the dim guard uh, module in a very consistent way. So that is what I have to say to David there. That so I have that. I hope that answers your question. Explains uh, how traps uh, hazards. Um, are crafted in Dimgard, and I thank you for your help and support. Um, I know that you, I know that you, that you, we, we have benefited from that on Reddit, and I presume that if you are following us on Facebook or uh, Instagram or in World, wherever that, that that we have there too. So thanks a lot, and thanks to everybody again. A special, and again a special thanks to the patrons and patron and backers of the. Um, Kickstarter.